Hey there everybody, welcome to Latvia and as you can see my beard is on full point today and just lovely and bushy but however I am here to show you my first impression review of the new Subaru XV, the all new Subaru Forester e-boxes. Our attention onto, whoa, careful there, the all new Subaru Forester. So this is the Mark V although you look at it and you think it's just a facelift it is not this is an all new Forester it is based on the new Impreza platform and Subaru have made the choice to make sure it kind of looks like the outgoing car because it's a very attractive car it does look very nice and you know it's got some good dimensions and proportions to it now the front end does look a lot familiar to the Mark IV but I'm going to take you straight around to the back for a couple of good reasons. Number one, it's been restyled. There we are. I mean, that is much better looking than the Mark IV Forester, which it is replacing. And I think as well with this green, I mean, yes, it does have that utilitarian look to it, but it works really well. I am thoroughly impressed with the styling of the Forester. It still looks big, chunky, and is clearly the flagship car. And again, with the Forester, We've got the e-boxer badging on there. So as I mentioned, it's a mild hybrid system. It's not like a full self-charging hybrid like a Toyota Prius. This is much in the same lengths as an Audi A6, BMW 5 Series with their mild hybrid system. So it helps with coasting, just doing a little bit more in terms of efficiency. Other thing as you can see, straight from the back, the boot, or the boot lid should I say, is much wider. I think it's around about, I'm not sure if it's centimeters or inches, but I think it's about 10, inches wider or 10 centimeters wider but also how quickly did that go up and that's something that uh, Subaru have addressed the actual mark 4 the one that I had if you've seen the video I do take a mickey out of the fact that it takes so long for the boot lid to close around nine seconds but here on the new mark 5 it is uh, only five seconds that's definitely a huge advantage and something that Subaru are very proud of is actually the width of the boot. You can get your golf bats in and they will go in sideways. You don't have to put them in at a diagonal. And again, it's a flat load bay. That's all nice there. You lift it up, you've got your tire puncture repair kit. Because unfortunately, there you go. There's your battery. So it is all underneath there. And it's very well protected. We've seen some footage of the... Forester being kind of slammed at 30 miles an hour from behind. Um, I realized how that sounded, but it's, uh, it's very protective, it's very safe. We've got little things like to get the rear seats down. We've got the little, uh, little levers there. We've got some shopping hooks. We've also got, if my little gimbal will go with me, there we are. Got some tethering hooks as well. And we've also got the oh, 12 volt socket. So that's all very nice. And we've also got with this car, and I'm so sorry, but it's a Harman Kardon stereo. It's a lovely stereo. However, we do not know if this is gonna be coming to the UK in terms of Euro, you know, UK spec. So that's something just to be aware of. Now I'm gonna use the power tailgate. See how quickly that was there. So let's finally, Check out the back seats. Plenty of knee room, leg room, and on this top of the range version, we have got heated rear seats and also two USB charging points. And considering this is an all wheel drive vehicle, there's very little in the way of a transmission hump coming through. So, again, a very comfortable car here and very spacious as well. One of the true strengths of the Forester. Now, oh, coming to the front. So it does look a lot like the outgoing Mark IV in that, you know, in terms of the layout. There's no digital cockpit. We've got standardized dials. We've got a new touchscreen. And then above that, we have the one at the top of the infotainment system. You can see it's actually scanning because just above it, there is some infrared sensors and cameras. So they actually do recognize your face and they will configure things such as the seating position, and also the wing mirrors you know to your setting and it can have up to five people saved on the car we've got some it's not a head-up display but little lights come up and show up to let you know if um, 
if you kind of get any kind of warnings and stuff like that this is a very safe vehicle it has got if i scan up there there we go we have got subaru's eyesight system so one of the best in the business definitely and then sorry it's not the quickest gimbal today so again we got it with the lineatronic gearbox again with that electric motor 12 kilowatt motor we've got a electric handbrake with auto hold we've got the x mode buttons there for going off roading snow mud dirt terrain and then there's also a little camera there which is for the passenger side wing mirror just to make sure you don't curve the alloy so i'm guessing for the uk that camera might be on the other side but again european specs do vary and in typical subaru fashion we have got quite a few buttons on the steering wheel but they are all functional and they do work and again underneath some of the additional safety features and one of the ones i did mention so that's for opening the boot and now you move across to get the height on there so unlike before where they're actually one above the other that's a nice um nice little addition or a nice little change there for this mark V. in terms of interior quality it's also taking a step up we have got soft touch plastics across also where my finger is i'm hoping i got that right is um it's like a really thick uh, rubber and it works really well and then on the side here we have got these are some hard plastics but they do feel very durable as you would expect from a subaru so that is the walk around i've got one of the team here he's just about to take the xv away but they are everybody that's the mark 5 subaru forester let me know what you think if you've got any questions put them down in the comment section below but now it's time to uh, take these cars for a drive and experience the new e-boxer technology so everyone you join me now in the new subaru forester with me is michael from planet auto please give their um, channel a like and a subscribe uh, so i've done the walk around of the car it looks very much like the previous generation subaru forester however it is an all-new platform it is based on the new impreza but subaru made the decision to make sure the car looked very much like the previous generation i don't think there was any complaints with the styling of it so the big thing about this launch here in latvia is that we've got the new e-boxer technology so let's go for a drive we've already done a bit of driving yesterday on the track and uh, off-road in but today it's kind of driving it on main roads um this is my first time working with michael so by all means please interject please give us you know what what your thoughts are as we drive along but yeah this is a mild hybrid we've experienced a little bit of the battery power of kind of at slow speeds usually like when coasting but um yeah let's go for a drive shall we but right here we go um first impressions were very good i think on the forester it reminds me a lot of the previous uh generation of forester and again click up in the top right hand corner and you can watch my review of that version where the shortfalls were with the forester definitely subaru have worked on them so the one thing i remember from the previous generation it's a very comfortable car it's actually i would say stupidly comfortable and the latvian roads are not the smoothest some of the tarmac is lovely we there's a bit of roadkill we just drove over i was gonna um, say they seem to have laid the tarmac just over yes. the top of the terrain it's it's very kind of eastern block road so the concrete quality i would say is good however the undulations and everything the potholes manhole covers are quite substantial but this has coped with them really well i'm genuinely happy that they've not done anything to the ride steering on the other hand they have tweaked with because the car is a bit flatter when going through the corners um substantially compared to the previous generation and we got shown like a little video demonstration of how subaru have bettered um the, the handling for the forester again it's based on an all new platform with the impressa so it's going to handle differently i was going to say there is some stabilization additions as yeah. well on the car that, that has improved the handling as well exactly and it's and it's yeah for long journeys we had no problems driving the car yesterday uh, i think in total we had about 60 kilometers in uh in terms of total driving half of it was in the forester half of it is in the xv and uh, you will get to see my first thoughts on the you know first impression review on the xve boxer 
and, uh, and see what we think of it there. But no, first impressions are really good. It's got all the strengths that I had as the previous generation Forester, and it is bettering a lot of the weaknesses, definitely. So with the uh, previous generation Forester, so it was called a Lineatronic, it's a CVT stepped gearbox. Um, as Michael very rightly put it, you don't rush them. You don't rush CVT gearboxes. If you just drive them in a very relaxed fashion, they'll do you no problems whatsoever. In fact, they'll be the most lovely, relaxing gearboxes you'll ever get to enjoy. It's only if you need to rush the car, if you're in a hurry, that's when you always get that um, infamous CVT whine. So something that Subaru have done with this hybrid technology is it just is a little bit quicker on the accelerator response so if you do need to put your foot down it is then helping you to uh, to be able to get you know get moving a bit quicker I think is the best way to describe it it also works in terms of off-roading so it puts a little bit of additional um, I'd say torque yes and uh, in, into the wheels so you're Wait. gonna see some footage going over the top of this now where we had to do a step test. So the first part of the step test is just using purely the engine power. You, there was no X mode engaged, and you can hear the engines kind of revving quite hard in order to get that uh, to go up that step. The next clip you're going to see is actually with X mode on, and that hybrid powertrain, that battery power, it just puts a little bit of extra torque in. And as a result, there's minimal effort through the accelerator pedal, but you still achieve going above the step and in a lot um, in a lot more hurried fashion, but in the same sense, a lot more relaxing because there's less effort from the car itself. I really think I've explained that in a terrible way, <laughs> but I'm hoping that you're looking at it and kind of saying, yeah, I agree with you, Dave. Well, the thing is, despite there being on-road improvements, off-road capabilities haven't been compromised yeah it's well yesterday i will openly admit i am in no way experienced driving off-road and everything that everyone else within the group did i was able to do in the forester it's nice and simple one button to activate x mode or in the forester's case this twiddly dial and you're able to sand mud steep inclines steep declines in it's just having the faith that you need to trust the car. Yeah, and that's one of the things with a lot of Subaru owners, they kind of want from their vehicle. So they're gonna get the safety, they're gonna get the dependability. The other thing as well that Subaru wanted to do because of that hybrid powertrain um, is actually, well, they actually said it's driver enjoyment. Uh, with cars like the, you know, the famous Impreza WRX STI, of course the enjoyment was there, but that's a completely different type of animal. So with cars like the Forester, the XV, um, even the new Impreza, that is going to get the e-boxer treatment. So I'm listening to the wonderful sat-nav, because this is my first time in Latvia, would you believe it? I'm not a regular here. Um, they want there to be a bit more enjoyment from the car, and that comes down to the fact that they have tweaked the steering. The throttle response is quicker, and yes, as I said, there is a little bit of the CVT wine, but it's not half as bad as the previous generation Forester. So, where Subaru knew the shortcomings were with the previous generation Forester, they have worked on them. And I think what it will do is it will get a lot of people looking at Subaru now, a lot of new buyers. I just want to make sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, it will get a lot of new buyers. Uh, coming to them, especially in this modern climate where a lot of people are unsure about diesels, but then again, Subaru don't do diesels. But if you want a hybrid drivetrain, this is definitely going to be one to consider, and it will be sat along the likes of probably the Toyota RAV4 um, and the Honda CRV hybrid. Despite the fact that they are proper self charging hybrids, this mile hybrid is very much in the, along the same realms of the Audi A6, BMW 5 Series and um, Mercedes E-Class in terms of those right. will do. Um, in terms of those mild hybrids. So when you kind of take your foot off, which is what I've done now, I've got an EV button uh, light that's just come on. So it is charging now the battery and it, at the same time it's coasting. Right. The engine's gone to zero revs, even under braking, there's no revs, the engine is off. 
and it's recharging. And Subaru have said there's an extra 10% additional yes. efficiency from uh, from having that hybrid drivetrain. So this is definitely a step in the right direction for Subaru. I think they're going to be sticking with the mild hybrid. I don't think they're going to do any full self-charging hybrids as of yet or plug-in hybrids. But um, it's, no, it's definitely a step in the right direction. I am genuinely impressed with the improvements on the new Forester. I think it looks good. I think they're not going to lose any of their demographic or any previous, you know, Subaru owners are not going to feel as though will do. They're not going to feel as though they're shortchanged or they're going into a completely alien environment. They they know it's a Subaru. It looks like a Subaru. It feels like one. It drives like one. But the technology is there. So for a first impression drive. Thank you. I was going to say that um, the new technologies, what they have put on this car, aren't intrusive. You've not, no. as a driver, you've not actually got to do anything. It's only boffins like us that really find it interesting that you notice these things. You know, if, yeah. if you just got in this car and had no idea it was a hybrid, it just works away in the background. You don't have to do anything. Exactly. It's only, I mean, there's none of the conventional um, hybrid. I say gumph, basically, where all the displays are showing blue and green and your wheels are turning and your engine's charging. There's not too much of that in terms of complicated graphics, and so to speak. So it is, you can just get in the car and drive it, and you'll just notice that at very low speeds, coasting. I noticed it yesterday when we were at the test track. Yeah. Um, the amount of times I could hear a, a whine coming from, from the car. There was no engine noise, just a whine, and just knowing that that hybrid system is working so you have reached your waypoint it is on your right we will do After yeah. 60 meters, turn left turn left so yeah it's as i said before it's a step in the right direction for for subaru um it's nice to not see them you know with with hybrid technology now meeting up with everyone else you know with with these types of cars as i was yeah as i said earlier I am thoroughly impressed by this. I think it's a very impressive car. It's a huge step up from the previous generation. Um, keeping all of its strengths, definitely working on a lot of the car's weaknesses uh, from the previous generation, from the Mark IV. And yeah, I think Subaru will get a lot more new customers because of the hybrid technology. Whether or not they go for the Forester, I think the XV, because that is their best-selling car, uh, I think that's where a lot of people are going to go. They're going to go to the XV. It's more family orientated. It's quite cooler in the way it looks as well. The Forester's got a very traditional, you know, agricultural look to it. You know the customer base, but they'll still be happy nonetheless. So I know I've rambled on a little bit. This is always, always what I do on these first drive impression videos, but thoroughly impressed with the Subaru Forester e-boxer. It's a step in the right direction very comfortable i'm really liking it michael have you enjoyed you've driven it as well but have you enjoyed uh, being a passenger and listening to me ramble on it's been very good <laughs> one thing i would add is yeah. pricing yes i we have, have sent we've had an email sent to us about the pricing off the top of my head i can't remember i know it's just over thirty thousand pound well i think 35 the forester the top of the line um xe premium yeah that you'll be paying thirty-seven thousand, well, a shade under thirty-seven thousand pounds for. Yeah. But prices for the standard XE trim, that's around thirty-five thousand. So yeah, so you can see where you know it. With any kind of new technology, it is going to be a bit more expensive. But thirty-seven, not too bad. It does put it very much into the realms of the competition. Well, I was going to say if you compare it to premium German rivals yeah. you're going to be paying £10,000 more when you've got a hybrid system. Exactly, so I mean in the bottom of the screen now you can just see a couple of prices of rivals, so I'm going to put up there the CRV, Toyota RAV4 and I'll put up the Audi Q5 uh, PHEV because I know that's a recent, oh make sure we're going straight there, see this is me in multitasking, I always try my best to um, yeah so you can get an idea in terms of comparison but you do get an awful lot of kit for your money you get Subaru's EyeSight system, which is undoubtedly one of the best safety systems on any car fitted. Uh, and again, we got a demonstration of that yesterday, just genuinely gutted we couldn't film because it was a jam-packed day because there were a few moments where yeah, the, I had the biggest you know, grin on my face. Uh, but yeah, essentially, it's competitively priced against its rivals, a lot of car for its money, and it's a big step up from the previous generation. 
So yeah, I'm very, very impressed. I know I've kind of said that two or three times, but um, but no, it's uh, it's a good car, definitely the new Forester E Boxer. So everyone, I hope you've enjoyed my first impression review of the E Boxers from Subaru. So that is the new Forester and the new XV uh, E Boxer. Again. Big thank you to, uh, to Michael for coming along for his first overseas launch with Planet Auto. Of course, guys, give them a like, give them a subscribe. Um, as always, please hit the like button. If you've got any questions or queries about the Subarus that we've driven, please put them down in the comments section below. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and I always advise, please follow on there as well and like, because there is additional content, a lot of still images. I do live videos, and you can sometimes see me goofing off with a big cheesy smile on my face if I'm doing something fun. So yeah, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this video of the first impression review of the new Subaru e-boxes, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Take care.